I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. I almost trashed our break room, Yeah, buddy. dude. <laughs> Edward, you fucking asshole. <laughs> almost broke my Bruce Springsteen shit. Uh, we have a comedic sensation on the show today. Mm. Uh, worked with this guy. Mm. <laughs> Funny. Great mm. beard. Huge following on the Instagrams. Thank you. He knows what he's doing, and he's gracing us with his presence and his time. Please help me welcome to the show, Dan Pulzello. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. There's a couple cameras. I'm going to look them all in the eyes. Do it. Welcome. But like welcome, the, guys. That's the main? Yeah. That's thanks it. for having me, guys. <laughs> Love course. the space. Fucking one of the best beards in comedy. I just great, want to throw that beard. out right there. Solid yeah. not, if you're only listening, you're missing out. <laughs> you got to go to the YouTube. Maybe go to the YouTube. YouTube. You got to check the beard. Yeah. <laughs> what is your worst day job? Worst day job? Um, I It was, it was like from the outside looks great like uh secure um boring i didn't know about uh it's not burnout but it's like when you're really really bored you can get like real tired of oh, and burnt yeah. out oh yeah yeah there's some like weird term for it but like it was tryptophan yeah it like was like turkey every day <laughs> dude like it was it's like it's like, after, thanksgiving, it's like watching five the, o'clock the detroit lions lose on thanksgiving <laughs> just is there any more stuff out there? That's exactly <laughs> it. It was so it was like fine. It was uh advertising for medical uh like ad sales for medical advertising. But Ooh. I wasn't I wasn't making sales. I was like post sale. Uh, All that to say, it was just really really boring, and yeah. I got put on a performance plan. That's the one step before they almost. Can you. Yeah, they were. I'm a corporate guy, so uh, I know, yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. know what perform- that is. Yeah, so perform- that to I'm going to help Ed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, working class holes. I am the office working class hole, and Ed mm-hmm. is our resident. Uh, I've done like I probably factory fifteen different janitors. Like, restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Janitor- yeah, right. Yeah, so that, I, I relate more to that. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I was a mover for one day, and then <laughs> yeah, I was I don't like, okay, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, so what's a performance plan? Well, I'll let him tell his performance plan. But typically, it's where. You fuck up so much that corporations, especially ones that are publicly traded, they have to have an in-house policy with HR for any recourse like litigation. So they got to make sure they warn you a certain amount of times. Mm-hmm. They got to make sure they put you on a plan. Like it's in all writing, these yeah. steps. It's the paper yeah. trail. It's yeah, a yeah, paper yeah. trail. So basically, we're sitting you down. We're starting he, a paper trail. The minute they put yeah. you on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta find. I yeah. would find another job. You're yeah, fucked. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna yeah, find anything yeah. to fire you. At that right. point, they're like, "We want to get rid of them." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were looking for. And also, so this was like very early in the stand up. And I, when I started doing stand up, I did it like an idiot. I was so inefficient. I was like, I would like fuck off at like four. 30 p.m. to try and get to Mike's in the city and then I would stay in the city and try and get like a 1250 midnight train home like I was so you're leaving early from the job yeah you're not even you're not even closing your computer down sprinting to, mm-hmm. to get to the mic then you're out till two to three in the morning yeah 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 and then you're getting there late which like nobody says that you have to do that like this, right. it was all but there's I was, a way to manage it it's funny how when you yeah. become an adult how you go like oh time management is a, oh, a my skill God. set my dad also like tried to like because i was living at home so he was kind of nudging me of like is are you being efficient like effective i was like fuck you know it was full grind <laughs> i was like i was full like grind like gary v like fully brainwashed i'm like this is the only way to be effective <laughs> and that was all towards stand-up and then like my day job i was like fuck it i like just you know just punch in punch out um, um, and I was doing badly enough and it was crazy with the performance review. I was like, I agree with you guys. Oh, you uh, my performance full, is bad. I was like, aware. it felt kind of like an out of body experience where I was like, I also see the mistakes that I make it like <laughs> we, you and me, it, it, it felt like they, they sit you down with some paperwork and you're like, I also have paperwork <laughs> documenting how bad of an employee here I are am. The, here are the things you missed. Oh my God. <laughs> You guys don't even have everything. You only have a ha- you only have the I'm shit that you're in my car. Yeah, at my lunch. Dude, party. I would I would legitimately go and nap in my car. Yeah, I would like take naps in my car. That's um, the class old move, right, Ed? Yeah, you've napped I in mean, many a car. I you? mean, I've yeah passed out in a bunch of cars. I've never, <laughs> <laughs> I've never willingly <laughs> napped. <laughs> I've never owned a car and had a job at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you did. I had a car that was like the neighborhood shelter. Homeless guys would just take turns sleeping in his car. When I yeah, wow. when I first moved to New York, I uh, had a Saturn station wagon that mm-hmm. uh, I abandoned in Williamsburg, like two thousand two. Okay. 
you know and it's just cheaper to leave it there you could just leave a car Mm -hmm. and just go hang out and get high in it you know i was like you know we had a bar bars closed hey you know what i got a car Right yeah, anymore. that's great. <laughs> but it, but you would have to we share ju- it with homeless men. Yeah, there would be homeless people. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you're, mean, I feel like you're hung up on like the <laughs> shitty parts of it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not like I haven't got all the upside, yeah. Daniel. Right? Yes. Yes. Of, of course, there would be like a newspaper and a, and a can of insure in there. You know what I mean? Like, Ed's yes, got all stench this. alone, the blankets and stench. <laughs> Certainly, somebody's living in there. But I mean, Ed's got all the nostalgia. And you're like, why are you? Why are you, why are you ruining this great memory that I have with all of your logistics about homeless? people dude there was homeless guys sleeping in there before i did uh, abandoned okay, the car. Yeah. like it was yeah it didn't lock yeah uh, <laughs> that's very funny so you were looking at the performance review and you're going yep 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 yeah. yep and the i felt so bad because my boss was like he would we would do like one-on-one meetings like he did he, he checked all the boxes to be like a um like a good mentor and yeah. he was like he was trying but it was also like i didn't tell him about comedy so it, it i looked like a drug addict uh, if you don't know that i'm that doing comedy stand up oh, yeah funny. that's yep. why people who are drug addicts get into stand up yeah cuz you can't really you can say you're doing stand up mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could just be yeah. like why are you out till 4 a.m.? I was doing oh, stand-up. Comedy, yeah, Why are yeah. you always high and drunk when you come home? Oh, stand-up. I yeah. get high with my yeah, friends. Yeah. It's true. And I wasn't, yeah, I would be like, oh, okay, I'm at an open mic, so I'll drink here. Like, I wasn't like an alcoholic or anything, but like, you know. Well, now you're in a bar lifestyle. Yeah, four yeah. drinks a week adds yeah. up. And, oh, oh you my know. God. Um, you don't think it does either. Yeah, no, absolutely. it seems like such commonplace to have a drink yeah. at, a cl- at, a night, at a bar. Yeah, you know, so, a comedy club. yeah, so you're not even like counting drinks correctly. But then, so yeah, I was like, he was he gives me the performance review i'm like yes i agree like and i will make changes to stop it <laughs> and then it reached a fucking breaking point so i was doing um okay what kind of shit were you doing were you just late late um missing like just en- entering the wrong number in on a spreadsheet and then that like so sloppy work yeah so that displays an advertisement on the wrong website and these are like medical yeah. ads oh. so it's like you can't display this ad on this website because xyz like you it's a lung skin, cancer and ad you gotta and focus so much at legal work. shit yeah 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 so God. much legal shit when it comes to medical advertising yeah. it's insane and so there was just a bunch of laziness um uh not laziness i was trying very hard in something else so i was lazy in this um late uh like sloppy work leaving early showing up late like yeah so hygiene yeah 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 uh, <laughs> you name it like dude did it all and <laughs> sexually harassing dude, my and all the kind of waitresses <laughs> there's also something i didn't realize about it until later because like I, it was like a friend of a friend's mom got me the job and then I saw her like after I'd left this job like years later and she was like I felt so bad for hiring you because you looked fucking miserable every day that you're there. so Mike dude when my when I'm not into something my face it's the eyebrows it's the beard it. I am people always ask me if I'm doing okay and that like because my baseline is just oh, like oh yeah because the beard yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And you so, have sharper features too so if you're not yeah. like smiley dude like and it uh, it affects me on stage too like <laughs> i i cannot even get close to misogyny on stage if i whiff misogyny people are like oh my god this oh, guy yeah. believes yeah. what he's saying yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no like like yeah, uh i'm uh, just looking at you right now yeah, yeah. you look the part dude, i i slapped it slap yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right there's one joke i had that where i was like oh blah 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 my wife's an immigrant i'm gonna deport her and people were like i cannot believe it. like <laughs> i had to stop telling it because it would ruin sets it would ruin sets for me because people were like i believe you there's something about it it's villain face like i'm coming to terms with it um so uh, so I'm on the performance <laughs> that might be the title villain of the face episode. so, so on, t- <laughs> on top of like on top of bad performance I just look shitty like yeah, I just like, look also you're terrifying angry. everyone around the office yeah so I'm bringing everybody's vibes down so there's there's a a breaking point it, it was a uh insert office spirit yeah <laughs> kills office spirit yeah I don't I, I was not an asset for this company at, at all uh and I think I don't even know if they exist anymore so I'm completely fine so you're in the right to fuck it all up for yeah them. I think this was like five or six years ago or whatever but so um breaking point i'm working for uh bringer comedy company which we don't need to say the name of but uh i am hosting or i'm not even hosting a show for them i am just shadowing 
somebody who's working the door so that I can eventually work the door. He which really is a, wanted it. Yeah, wow. which is a big opportunity, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just to get on stage for... Uh, God. Uh, you're, and, you're making us all sad right yeah. now. <laughs> <And that laughs> was was like, I'm like, I'm like oh, it sounds like a yeah. good gig. <laughs> <laughs> shadowing I don't blame you. <laughs> Fifty thousand a year job so or shadowing so a guy? So you that position's available? <laughs> <laughs> and he's been looking for some spots. Dude. So... It's shadowing the person who's working the door of a sh- of a bringer and not oh, performing. Yeah. Oh, so I so there was the there was a chance that I was performing that night. I I drive into the all, this job was in New Jersey, so I would drive to a park uh, a parking lot, pay the parking lot, uh, hop onto a uh, the NJ Transit, right. get yeah. into the city, and then back into the so. There's this one day I just I was like fuck it I'm too late to get to this show I drive into the city from New Jersey I park it's Eastville Comedy Club at the old location yeah uh-huh. and so I'm shadowing the guy who's working the door the guy working the door is like I think we could get you up tonight and I was like oh my god this is amazing this is the best night of my life it's a 10 p it's a 9:30 show gets to 10 p.m. and he's like hey sorry we can't uh, Gaffigan's coming like we we cannot put you up yeah it is and this is early enough where I'm like oh my god Jim Gaffigan I mean I still feel that way sure but. It's now it's like now I'm meeting a comedy idol and he comes in and you shake he shakes everybody's hands and you get to watch him. And so that's like, holy shit, I'm in New York. I'm doing it. I'm two years into comedy like this is I don't even care what happens tomorrow. Like this is I don't even get on stage. I get bumped by him. Yeah. But this is like a story. Yeah. I'm here for I uh, this a weeknight like Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I was like, God, that was fucking amazing. I leave. My car has been towed. It is gone. My car is it's in the East Village, dude. Too, so you my look, car dude. is gone. And you got to find the nearest sign. No see. warning. Oh man, it, it called was, a number. I'll never forget it. It was like no standing after 10 p.m. or something, or like 11 p.m. And I was I didn't know what standing meant. I didn't know that standing wasn't parking. It, no standing is like no parking after a certain. So I was like, oh, no standing, 11. Okay, I'll be fine. And I go whatever, like they thirty do that minutes shit on beyond. purpose. That's, yeah. That, oh, that, so I have to go. Paves the road with gold. Yeah, I have to get to the Port Authority um, place where they have the cars. It's you it's know so far, dude. It's it really is far. The farthest point. To, like you got yeah. your car towed. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I guess your Multiple crack your crack days. Yeah. The first time I came to New York, I got my car towed, and then I got it towed on Thanksgiving, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, uh, probably about four years ago. No, yeah. it is like it's uh, the okay. most inconvenient place. Yes. In all of Manhattan yeah. to get so, to. It's, it's a, literally a Dante's Inferno. There's like You're like, surely I am close to getting my car back. And it's like, no, a cop needs to take you into the warehouse. Oh. And the, the cop is doing a like taxi thing. So if you miss that cop, you go then the you next. have to wait for the taxi oh. cop like to come shuttle. back. Yeah, it's like an airport shuttle bus. Yeah. Right. I totally because there's so about many that. cars. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all everybody you're with is just furious. It's oh. now we're getting into like midnight 1 a.m. Oh. And uh, finally, you're you're drunk on, people, dude. Oh. You're on the way out, and you're like, okay, I've paid all of the fees, and then they charge you to get out of the thing. Yeah, that's right. So you've paid like one ticket, two ticket, and then on the third one, like they're like, you have to pay another ticket just to get out of the thing. I like, I'm I'm glossing over all the diesels, but it was literally like from the moment my car got towed, it was just a. Just seven different punches to the ass. dick. <laughs> it was every fucking corner you would just get like punched in the dick. So how um, was Gaffigan set? <laughs> it was like, yeah, how much you learn from Gaffigan? <laughs> Some tools you still use to this day? It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But even like, so even all that. Everything like, is coming in a nutshell, right? Yeah. This is what I dreamt for. Like, not more than one minute later. You're just getting your ass handed Dude, to you by life. You. Every oh, moment. God. So get, I, I get home. <laughs> At 4 a.m. Yeah. Wow. Go to hey, sleep. To Jersey. You're yeah, to Jersey. Back. To Jersey. Fall asleep for how two many, hours. How many dollars in the hole are you at this point? Uh, probably like 400. Yeah, yeah. Thereabouts. So I have the job. So I'm not like, I'm yeah. living at home. My expenses aren't like crazy. But I get into work that day and I immediately make like three or four mistakes, like nonstop rapid fire, just like sending this ad to the wrong place, messing this one up. And my boss calls me in. <laughs> I don't even think it had gotten to like 10 a.m. He was like, Dan, can you a word? And he was like, what is going on? Wow. Because you've been doing terribly. And then you come in and this is the worst that you've ever done. <laughs> you just had your performance review. And you said you're going to fix yeah. all this stuff. And it could <laughs> not have worse. gone. It's like, are you 
fucking with me? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a guy who's supposed to lose weight and he comes to weigh in and he's like gained five pounds. Yes, exactly. It, it's exactly like that. But it's I'm still like, yeah, dude, I agree with you. Like, yeah, no, I can't stop eating. <laughs> I just, you're completely right. I just fucked up three more things. How crazy. And that was when I told him, I was like, I am doing stand-up comedy. The reason for my performance being terrible i can't like, manage both yeah he, i was like so and he was like okay so you have a hobby and i was like oh fuck you don't uh, get no, that no, 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 yeah no, no, so no, then no, no. even that even the come to jesus moment was still i was like you're not getting it you're not, you're I'm, not I'm an addict i'm never leaving uh, yeah and i was behaving like addict lee oh so then, yeah. yeah comedy's a drug it yes. really is yes 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 uh um, treat it like a true drug mm -hmm. i ever tell you about that bus boy a time i was a bus boy and i dropped uh so i would go to the bar Bar glasses didn't go through like the regular, just what you have mm -hmm. to like do that separate thing. Yeah. And you put the tray down, and when you unload a tray, you got to unload like the farthest from the ledge, mm -hmm. or else it yeah, tips flips over. over. So that happens. I, <laughs> I don't know that. It flips over. I break all these bar glasses. The fucking bar manager's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. An hour later, I do the same thing. Oh, oh my god and dude. then the fucking fry cook who's sitting there dying laughing he goes dude if you do it again i'll give you 20 dollars." <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that's funny they're all laughing i'm like all right and honest to god dude it happened a, a third, third time, time dude and oh the guy my lord in the office, he goes Yo, what's going on? But unlike you, I wasn't addicted to comedy. I was addicted to cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, like, I was like, I'm addicted to cocaine. <laughs> really, really into cocaine. Oh, so you have a hobby. <laughs> no, no, no. It's beyond a hobby. <laughs> I want to go full-time cocaine. I'm trying to go full-time cocaine. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. It's not. It's not. It's not it's far. It's not off. that different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got to just. Uh, well, yeah, the level of. But also, like now, I am like the most effective I've ever been, and like am able to hold down a day job because it's like full communication. The people with the day job understand what I'm doing. Yes. And, well, now you can be more transparent. Like I've talked yeah. about this on the show before, because being an office guy, I have been fired, part, mostly to my own doing, but also. It's come into play in some situations of me not continuing at a job over me being a stand up in the yeah. early like early aughts into like the 2010s, probably all the way up to about 2013. You know, I I remember losing a, an office job once just solely because they were like, well, we think your focus is on stand up and we think your performance is fine, but we want like a lifer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're allowed to want that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like. You want the best person at the position. You got to be so undeniably good at your office job mm -hmm. that uh, they can't ever. Because that's the one thing about an office job. If you're really good at it, they don't want to train someone else to do what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's like any other job, but like mm -hmm. really with an office job, that's why people can get away with having the most bland personalities ever. Yes. Because it's just if you can do that one thing, mm -hmm. they the last thing I want to do is try to get someone else to do that one thing yeah 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 well and there's yeah because there's two things right there's somebody that's really good at it or there's somebody that they can just own oh yeah you know what yeah I, mean? like, I remember hearing restaurant guys talk about uh dishwashers like and they would call him a lifer oh he's a lifer he's good yeah gonna hire he, talking about hearing them talk about hiring a person he's like he looks like a lifer yeah and it's so demeaning it man. is mm -hmm. it's just so like we can just own you because it's, it's like middle management controlling like a a smaller like smaller little entity like oh yeah. Like, yeah. we're totally. no we're nobodies but god i'm salivating mm -hmm. over having to oh he's a lifer oh this, i'll never have to yeah. worry about covering a dishwasher like because your life's already pretty sad yeah like, even though you're middle management and you're making a little bit more than the rest of the people yeah it's still a pretty sad existence yeah. to where you're like oh honey guess what i did today some poor fuck who's probably got some severe mental issues is going to be a lifer dishwasher. You know what that means? I never have to replace him with another one for at least 10 years. Yeah. I'm going to be living on the hog, baby. Hi on the hog. <laughs> His name's Eddie McGowan. I've never met a guy who loves to wash dishes like this, Dude, when this I heard Italian him, Mick. When I, heard him say, when I heard him say that, I was like, oh man, I'm stealing from this place so good. I'm just fucking, I am taking anything that is not fucking bolted down. Fuck this place. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, yeah, but but it is like that is I think it's true. You want somebody who's like really fucking good, like undeniably good or somebody who I will. Get, I, I yeah. mean, I get it. You don't want. I mean, there's nobody that calls out at a restaurant. Nobody calls out more than a dishwasher. Yeah. And it is yeah. a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it's like, dude, we only we only have 100 soup spoons or 80. Soup sure. Spoons, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like mm. this is going to be an it's issue. A, it's a real. But it's a real quickly. life. 
it's one of those moments where you go like, uh, it's like a oh shit moment. I call it the moment when you get sent to jail, and then they shut the, they shut the cell. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those moments of your career life. Yeah. Like Im- imagine knowing like that your job for as many years as you're gonna work is gonna be like a manager of a Applebee's. Yeah. That's your job. Oh mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything you talk about from that moment forward is just how to get to the next day. Right. Yeah. And that's what I feel like those conversations are where you're like, fuck, dude, yeah. that's where the, the the cell door just shut. And you're like, yeah. well, I'm a manager of this Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Like I was like 23, pro- like probably like first year, uh, first job out of college. And it was just kind of like cause it, it, it never ceased being in, insane to me. Like I was always flabbergasted by it, by we were all on like the 33rd floor or something. And it was like selling TV ad space. And it was like, oh, you know, there's a uh, sales assistant, account manager, uh, you know, GM, like VP or whatever. And I was like, we're all on the same floor. Like you're just moving around yeah. the office from like this cubicle to that cubicle to, oh, this cubicle has a door. Yeah. And that to me, I was like, that can't, that is that cannot be progression. That's a horrible right. musical that, chair yes. that I'm looking forward to. Well, that's another thing that, yeah. that the corporations do too is like where they're like, we'll just give you, we just make a bunch of titles. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're just giving you like assistant, creative. Oh, we're just going to keep adding yeah. titles yeah. and yeah. Yeah. not yeah. giving you any more money. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Dude, that's fuck. That makes me want to throw up. Oh, how about this? Good job interview story oh Whoa. nice this has it always been like ad sales for you is that kind of your background then? yeah i just fell at, i uh played lacrosse in college lacrosse ended as it does yeah. because your college <laughs> career ends and i had no you clue. want to do nothing. anything else dude i had question, nothing are there professional is there a professional lacrosse team like could there, you go pro there is now where you could make like I think like fifty, sixty a year, and uh-huh. then like plus sponsorships, and then clubs or um, coaching youth teams, and like doing your own like yeah, you have to be a lifer, stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaching, yeah. All that stuff. And but to be like an actual pro level, is there a league? Yeah, so it's called the Premier Lacrosse League, and I was D three, so like there was probably one kid on my team who could have gone pro. Uh-huh. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and he just like didn't fill out the paperwork and was like, okay, well, and we were all very mad at him because we were like, you should just at least try and go yeah. pro. Yeah. Man, give us some. Yeah. 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 Let us <laughs> right. say we played with a guy who went like, pro. He's yeah. like, good enough. And he's like, yeah, this is dumb, guys. Dude, we, <laughs> it, it, it was a job at my dad's business. It was exactly that. We were drinking. I'm going into medical ad sales, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. We were, we were drinking at like, we were drinking at like a college party and like the i think the season had like ended or it was about to go into the season and like somebody was on twitter and it's like oh the fucking the lacrosse draft is on, like the major league lacrosse draft is on like mike did you register he's like nah I didn't. and we like just start watching just fucking Dude, pulling, a, we, pulling a fucking thing out of a bomb like <laughs> <laughs> we're on twitter <laughs> <laughs> we're on Twitter just like watching people like get taken. We're like, Mike, you're better than like a bunch of these people. Oh, wow. And it just like, and now he's, I think he's in finance or something like yeah, that. Yeah, good but, for Mike. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But your interview, sorry. I can't interview. Go so yeah. that was all that to say like what I career was just like, thank God for comedy because comedy is a thing that's like really similar to athletics in terms of like progression and yeah. like yeah, yeah. work on your own. Yeah, I don't and know if you know, so I was a college quarterback. And <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it in every podcast. Did you? Where at? Uh, I played at a small school, Juco, but you know, uh, yeah. I got some big <laughs> offers going in, but not great grades. As you yeah. guys know, in San Diego, I'm very famous. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I agree. You know, the discipline, yeah. the, the momentum shifts and changes, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. Yeah. It's much like being a college quarterback. It's like, it's like, reading, it's like reading a defense, you know? It's all about... No, but I do agree with you. Yeah. It, but the problem is there's a meritocracy involved in sports. Yes. And I found that the most aggravating part of stand-up. Oh, yeah, yeah, it took yeah, me yeah. a long time to get over. That yes. it didn't matter if you were putting out the best product. No. The best guy doesn't always play oh, yeah, in yeah, stand-up. Yeah, yeah, and sure. that was hard. Because yes. in sports, especially football, best guy always plays. Yeah. Occasionally, it would be like, oh, that's the coach's son. Yeah. Well, and that, and that was, but that, that was rare enough. So rare. Yeah. And I would see it with people who were like, I don't know how I feel about it now, but like I had a successful college career and I looked at people who were like, oh, the coach fucking hates me. And I was like, OK, I think you're I think you're using that as an excuse. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, like oh, yeah. but now looking back on it, it's like I think there are like petty coaches who could just like totally really go out of their way to ruin kids' line lives to yeah. to win. Yeah. Now granted if it's if it's close, you're going to lose that battle because they'd rather yeah. put the kid in that they actually mm-hmm. want to coach instead of you if, yeah. if you're unlikable. I've been unlikable. Yeah. Uh, but if you're that good, they got to play you. There's yes. no way around yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're that good, they, you will never not play. I mean, yeah. they found guys who've killed people. Mm-hmm. Seriously. And got oh, them right. to play. Yeah, you see it everywhere. There are yeah. a number yeah. of stories of guys who have yeah, right. been suspected of killing people yeah. that still play yeah. sports. Yeah. They're, so... Um, yeah, so I would agree that like the meritocracy element is like because and then also in football there's like rules and then in comedy there's like no rules <laughs> like yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. we're all but there are so many unspoken rules that you have to learn yeah, yeah, as you yeah. go it's Which so I can't, crazy yeah I can't uh, stand any of that shit yeah um, but to have a thing that like can take all of the energy that you want to put into it yes. and like maybe oh, too much yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like right. so yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, gigantic yeah, yeah. gap in my life filled like yeah. no yeah, sports, sports to, was so yeah. everything to it me was it was everything a, nine, it was more than a nine to five it was yeah. 60 hours 70 hours identity a week. importance yes i just like being like uh yeah so like growth like oh my god i'm better this year than i was like because that uh-huh. was something that like in work like you just don't i mean there are jobs where it's like but i never found myself in a position where like i'm a better person now um so <laughs> on paper i look like a savage just like um lacrosse player like um you know good grades and stuff and so i get sent on like a sales job and i do not have a sales bone in my but body but you're an attractive candidate yeah i look especially lacrosse is like a upper echelon sport yeah there's not many teams like how many schools that have lacrosse you oh, gotta be yeah. kind of a wealthier demographic mm-hmm. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i and i would recommend people to recruit lacrosse players guys or girls because there's like I think it's yeah. There was somebody who was like, you recruit like lacrosse players and rugby players because there's no chance of them going pro. Mm-hmm. Those guys just really fucking like to guys or girls just yeah. really like to do the sport. Play the game. Yeah, yeah, it's a pure. But like, I don't even know if I agree with that. So I look like an attractive job candidate for a medical device sales company, and I'm I at this point I'm full into stand up. I've taken a, ha- a part time job. And I get re- a recruiter reaches out to me who had like worked with me in college. He was like, I have a job for you. And I was like, okay, I'll see. <laughs> what could a sales interview be like? Yeah. I show up. They, I bomb. Like, dude, yeah. they were, they were like, well, you, you know, we, your buddy, uh, your buddy Brian works here. Did you ask him about what the job is like? And I was like, no, I didn't think about, of reach. It was like, you didn't reach out, I, uh, dude, angry. They're, oh, yeah. they're actively like, they're, they take it so serious yeah. and you're going, you're disrespecting them by walking in, not yeah. prepared for the yeah, opportunity. You just rolled in. You know? Yeah. Like, I was hey, like, yeah, I got a half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> they asked, they asked me a question. The guy goes, he's like, why do you wake up in the morning? And I was like, uh, to make the world a better place <laughs> which if you've never been in a sales interview job before i cannot tell you that is the absolute worst answer that's the worst not worst. related to capitalism is the worst answer dude give it's that the dumbest thing i've ever and it's like kind of true i a guess place. yeah like don't the you ego on this lacrosse player yeah <laughs> pick up every day and grab my net stick and i think <laughs> i'm gonna make this world a better place pick up litter man you know just do my part I haven't used it to pick up litter since yeah. my, my career ended see, like dan with like a sash at like a yeah. beauty contest oh like, they didn't know i wake up every morning <laughs> to make the world a better place dude they had no <laughs> sales is such a funny like i so what, a, what is the right answer to that the right like he my, tells me the right answer yeah. he's like now ask me what oh, i right <laughs> he goes yeah. like this what he's like he's dick. like now ask me why do i wake up in the morning i was like why do you wake up in the morning he goes money oh god <laughs> money of course Dude, money so I can provide for my family. Oh, which, yeah. Like, I love that's, how they always yeah. say that's yeah, what it's yeah, about. Yeah, it's yeah. not about you trying to make up for a small dick or yeah. you trying to make up because you fucking got a, uh, you're ugly. Like, it's, yeah. all, it, it's not money yeah. for the sake of taking care of little Janie and Johnny. Yeah. It never is. No. I once had a, uh, okay, so I went out on the road to do, like, uh, to be a hype man for this um, hardcore band. It's like that sounds like Dude, I a lot heard. of fun. Yeah, yeah. So they, they're like, yeah, come out and let's do this. And so I was working as a car salesman mm-hmm. and I just got a job. I was recruited 
from a used car lot that was attached to a titty bar to like a Ford dealership, a mm-hmm. big time dealership. Ooh, that's a step the guy, up. the guy found me and was like, "Hey, I am the GM of this Ford dealership. <laughs> Josh we shows could up use at the you." Ford dealership, and he goes, "So where are the dancers?" At now? <laughs> so what a titty bar is this attached to? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be so, a better one than the one yeah, I have. Yeah, right? <laughs> Do you guys have like a deal with the titty bar where like I can throw in like a lap yeah, dance with used, the car? Because that was how I made a lot of the I sales. Used to make the Filipino guy <laughs> wax a couple of these ladies' cars for a couple of discount lap dances. You guys got the same situation? Um, so in the middle of this, I get this call with this. I had recorded an album with these guys because they heard my stand up. Yeah. And they go, can you just shit talk us on the album? Mm-hmm. And then the album did fairly well for whatever that demo is. Mm-hmm. And they're like, dude, we put together a tour and people are like, they want you to come on the tour and we got a bunch of extra money. Do you want to come on the tour? So I said, yeah, you know, I, I want to do that. Uh, so I left the job and then the, the tour ended and I needed a job again. And they were like, we still would love you to come back. So I'm like, all right, and they, but we got a new sales manager. He wants to meet you, okay? Mm-hmm, interview. Mm-hmm. I get there. I'm wearing like the fucking. I'm I'm so sad going there. I'm like, really yeah. depressed. Yeah. I'm driving there because it's there. like you were doing something. Like I was on the road so for two <laughs> months. Cool. And yeah. Now I'm going now back. back yeah. And I hated yeah. the job because, like you were saying, Dan, those dudes are career car salesman yeah. yeah they were pulling down at that time 2004 they're probably pulling down e- one guy was easily probably pulling down 300k a year wow. yeah. the gm mm-hmm. wow. just because they, people were buying a lot of cars wow. and those cars were always 30 to 70 grand a pop depending upon which one you got so they were like i remember when i i sold a couple cars and because i sold a couple cars they were like we're letting you work saturday and I was like, uh, I'm not working Saturday. I got to work the door at the comedy store. Uh, I can't come here on a fucking Saturday. Me. And then this dude who sucked at the job was like, he wanted it. He was like, I cannot believe you just fucking turned down Saturday, dude. That's insane. You, you can walk out of it like three grand. I'm like, dude, I got to go work the door for Jeff Altman this weekend. I might get I might get five minutes open for Jeff Altman. (laughs) Which on again sounds like oh yeah no that's like a pretty good that's a pretty good opportunity because that might lead to other (laughs) door related Denny Robinson after (laughs) that (laughs) Willie Tyler and Lester the puppet guy I I got a big (laughs) shit going on here and they all happen on Saturday so guess what it's a no (laughs) so I was driving to the interview. And I, you have to park inside the dealership, and I couldn't find a parking spot. So I try, and all of a sudden, my stomach just like, I get that, I got it. It's an emergency. Oh, I oh, take, take a shit. dump. Oh, okay. There's a Ralph's. existential dread, and you got oh, yeah, it's yeah. like all of it came together. Yeah. yeah. So I have to park because it's like lunch hour, and everyone's going to this like Ralph's or whatever to get their lunch. It's like a complex of businesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sprinting. I have to park the car so far away, so I'm sprinting to the toilet get into the toilet i'm getting my pants down and i have an accident Mm -hmm. all over the pants yeah like shit on the khaki as i'm pulling it down you didn't make it i didn't i made it but not although i got like in the back of it there's like a little bit of shit it's a one or a zero so i try yeah yeah. so i (laughs) I try to wipe it off and there's like there's no way yeah i'm going into this interview with shit on my khakis Uh -uh. as i'm pulling out with shit on like i take the pants off in the car put mm-hmm. them on the floor i'm in my underwear driving out of this thing and i could hear you know those dealerships have the loudspeaker i could hear over the loudspeaker them going josh accardo the sales <laughs> office josh accardo oh the sales God. office <laughs> never looked back bro yeah. i just fucking never went back <laughs> <laughs> i was like unemployed for easily three more it's months so after that. that's so great <laughs> That's so great. I just shit all over my salesman. I had like one pair of sales khakis. Sales khakis. I'm like, yep. there's no, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta wash these. I'm what never going back. I'm gonna have to explain this. I, I, seriously, yeah. I gotta sit there and talk to this I guy. I gotta tell this guy I shit all over myself. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. That's just the loss. Never going back. No. Yeah. That's the only thing to do. That's the only solution. <laughs> yeah. In that I situation. respect that. Full fucking salute. Yeah. It was like yeah. a sign. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, 100%, dude. I'm a good interview, though, by, by trade. Yeah. I'm good in the interview room. If you can get me in the room, I'm good. Now I know you got to lie. I didn't lie. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. You were so honest. Dude, how about this? The fucking, I leave. They were like, we're no longer considering you for this position. They tell me, and then they say like, there's another job going on down the stairs if you want to interview for that one. So I leave that job and then I hear another guy go in and I hear, I can hear what he is saying. And he's like, I'm going to be the la- I'm going to be the first one in. I'm going to be the last one out every fucking day. All I can. And I was like, God damn it. That's what I was supposed to say. I was supposed to say all that shit. It didn't matter because you would have blown it. 
Yeah, I could. Because sales is a different game. If you're yeah. not motivated by money, you can't. I can't. You cannot fake you, sales. You cannot fake it. Yeah, especially in New York. Too. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So what I, do you? So now it's ad sales, but in a different format. You do it no, that works for you, or I, just a, a better move. I work in production now. Ah. Yeah. So like fully remote video production. I'm on site like once every. Uh, That's awesome. Month probably. That's a perfect job for stand up. Yeah, too. it's stressful. Uh, well, it's I, logistic based, right? Yeah. Um, well, productions. Because he's an editor. That's production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Production is a stressful it. thing. That, yeah. like, you know what I mean. You have all these people lined up, and it's kind of got to go smooth, or else, yeah. you know, you run into overages. Yeah. And all that kind yeah. Of bullshit. But yeah. the guy who hired me was a comedian. Like, is a comedian. Oh, that's so huge. he knew. That's huge. And then now I got grandfathered into like another company, and like I was, I got good at it. Like, I don't, I don't really even know how. It, I think it was challenging. It like sparked parts of my brain that were like i want to be good at this like just enough and then now then COVID happened and we went fully remote and now it's like as good of a job situation as i know of like occasionally i'll be like oh i gotta take a, a call with japan at like 8 p.m so i have to miss out on like a spot but i just won't put in the veils for that night or something so uh and but you'll have a heads up you'll know ahead of time it's yeah not like yeah. day yeah. of and uh cool. can work fully remote like uh, so you be on the road and take a call. Yeah. I'd have to take a full day off of work. I mean, yeah. That's awesome. That's great. I dude. open for uh, my buddy uh, Eric Newman a bunch, oh, nice. and he has no idea what I do. Uh, but all his what he thinks I do <laughs> is that I'm just always on the phone in the lobby of the hotel we're staying at just talking to China. <laughs> like that's He's like, oh, yeah, Dan's got to go talk to China. It's like, what do you think? I You think I'm talking to the country? You think I'm talking to like the Chinese Communist Party? Like, what do you think that I am... I'm on the phone just like, yeah, Mandarin. yeah, hey, China, yeah, yeah, make the wall bigger, yeah, yeah great wall, yeah. I'm yeah buying, the wall is great. Yeah, I'm buying up parts of the wall. Like, I have, I have no idea what he thinks I do. But he's, he's just like, oh, Dan's on with China. It's like, you don't know. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'm on with a Chinese person, but I'm not on with China. Not with all the Chinese yeah. people. Dude, the fucking, I, one at a time, one at a time, the fucking two billion of you. I, uh, that's the thing, I, f I feel like, I don't mind the day gig anymore because it's becoming a lot more reasonable. Yes, over time. The work life with expertise balance is becoming reasonable. Nobody tells you that. Yeah. With expertise, you yeah, do less yeah. work. Yes. Yeah. Knowing what you're doing. Well, well the other thing too, we were smarter. talking about it before too is like when you're good at it, like I'm an editor uh, and I have like a couple of clients, but they I've made it clear that I'm like I can't miss I missed a casino gig mm -hmm. and I was just like, Okay, this is it's not gonna work out, guys. I, yeah. But they were like, "Oh, dude, no, we'll work with you." Mm -hmm. So now it's like, yeah, you know, because now they want your services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it works out. But uh, even that though, there's still, and it's it's been a a thing of therapy with me. It's like there's always gonna be that conflict of, course. of yeah. like, hey, can I, you know, I gotta run out the door. Hey, this thing is going longer than I thought. I was going on. I did like a a bunch of shows in Europe, and the day that I went out. I was me and my wife were in on our way to the airport, and I was. Oh, like, your wife's from Europe, right? Uh, she's Australian, but Australian, she she okay. worked in uh, England before. Um, so we're on. She's like, it's like a career highlight. Like people have paid tickets in Europe to see me. Ah, that's huge. And I'm dude. I'm I'm on my way to the airport, and I realize like, oh fuck, I didn't get coverage for this call that's happening at eight a.m. So I'm, now I'm DMing my boss at like four a.m., five a.m. Uh, I was like, dude, I. You got to You're going to have to cover this call. I'm going to be in the air. Yeah, it's I'm going to be, be in the air. I can do everything else, but I know. And this is a trick for anybody who is thinking about becoming a Tory comedian. Uh, <laughs> wi airport Wi-Fi, airplane Wi-Fi does not allow for... Nothing. Uh, no VPN, no nothing. No, you're fucked. You no can't Zoom, work on the plane. No WebEx. You can't like, do shit. You, you cannot... They have completely firewalled like any web-based calling apps that you can't can do, do on yep. a plane. So if you're ever thinking like, oh... This is this is also for three people. What I'm explaining is for three people. If you're like, hey, I need to do a work call on the plane, you cannot do it. Yeah, they're, they're not even even if the Wi-Fi is good. Remember they used to have phones, the phone though? in the thing you put your car. Oh my god, slide in. I would, those? that would be amazing. Yeah, why don't they bring those back? I would yeah, be fucking dude, racking so that up. Oh, dude, I would make so many phone calls. Oh my god, now I would. like you know what I mean? Like, because that no. was I was a kid. You know, I didn't have money now, but now I got, I'll drop twenty bucks if I could just call Zach. Like Zachy, three <laughs> I could call Zach from, the from the airplane. <laughs> yo, it's yo, bad enough sitting next to some opera. Sing me some opera, man. It's already bad enough sitting next to a guy, and I gotta sit next to like calling Zaggy Peanut. 
<laughs> so not only am I, I, I got to be involved in some way in a Zaggy Peanuts there's reality. Only, there's only one number on the, <laughs> on the phone. Zaggy Peanuts number? It's not even numbers. It just says Zaggy Peanuts. You're just saying, all right, here we go. <laughs> That's the only person you could call? <laughs> yeah. I would, man. I'd, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, man. I would have seven Bacardi and Cokes oh. and call that guy. If, honestly, if that was a thing, I think Zach would totally lean into it. He would have like, like all movie the- Like movie phone, but Zaggy Peanuts. But he'd have yeah. like all the, like, the flight trackers <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, oh, what you, what's his uh, flight 677 is calling? Hey, is uh, Gina working that flight? <laughs> <laughs> trying to bang a fucking stewardess. <laughs> He would. He hey, would try that beautiful finagle. Gina working that flight. Hey, hon. He, he would try and finagle it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what uh, Zach. I don't know what Zachy P is up to, but that's what he well, should. Well, he's going to hear this episode, and he's, he's going to be working on that. Zachy he's P. Be, he's on the next. He's going to come in with a whole fucking blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it happen. Two hundred percent. I know I can make. Two hundred and ten percent. I can make this happen. Think of a phone. One button. <laughs> One button phone calls Zachy P from the sky. <laughs> my fucking, I'm the text I'm gonna get from this. I'm yeah. already like, dude, oh, I love yeah, this yeah. idea. I love, yeah. Hey, you think love we can get some idea. capital behind it? I think if we had five, six I Gs. I have an uncle that works at American. <laughs> I got an uncle works down at the bag, uh, the baggage at Delta. <laughs> I'm all for it. If you if you need capital, I'll put like. I'll put a couple. Yeah. I'll put a couple dollars. For it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, what is going on with you? Like, what are you working on? I know the social media has done really well for you. Yeah. Uh, what Just is that like? How did that happen? Uh, what is the world like the, on that side of it? The interview. The interview that I had. Uh, so I'll start from. I have a uh, Instagram series where I make fun of European working conditions versus American working conditions. Uh, brand for the show i love this uh and people like it people seem some people seem to like it but that was from a uh my wife is australian and pretty much people are like how do you know so much about europe and i was like i don't know anything about europe but australians and europeans think the same way yeah so and, i have a resource at home. yeah so i have a resource australia is pretty much just england texas like mm. it's, <laughs> yeah it really is. Um, oh, that's interesting yeah, that's yeah. Good... um so i had this tweet that did well that was just like a comparison of like uh, Americans will go to work with like gunshot wounds and uh, Europeans will like um, you know 300 days vacation it's like a fi- it's a tweet that's like fine I, I, and I'm butchering it right now but that was the most viral tweet that I ever had and that was like 2017 and then people started genuinely commenting on it like no I've been to work with open wounds like I've like I have been to work with you know straight after like giving birth and like oh, had, yeah. and so that was like 2017. I was like, okay, that's interesting. It was like right time, right oh, place, yeah. right? And right. I was just trying like really hard. Because the pandemic hit a couple yeah. years after that. Like all the working condition stuff started to be mm. really hot topics. And yeah, so uh, a couple things. So that happens. I'm, I tried really hard at Twitter and like Twitter's the, fu- Twitter's the hardest social media app, yeah. like by far. And so I had that one tweet and I was like, oh yeah, that's interesting. And then just like file it in the back of my brain. The pandemic happens. I'm living in New York. And I'm like genuinely scared of COVID and not like I probably get to like two mics a week in COVID. And I was like, let me just figure out this TikTok shit. Because the first thing that I posted on TikTok got 500 views. This was like very early TikTok. And I was like, 500 is un- that's literally it might as well be 2 million based on the numbers that were happening before TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember writing oh, it in a group chat. I was like, guys, TikTok is giving away views they are. right now. They were like letting everyone yeah, get yeah, through yeah. the algorithm. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, dude, I, I was like 600 views for a stand-up clip. I was like, I've never gotten anything even close yeah, to yeah, that on YouTube. That's, that's right. And so I recognized it like, like not even that early, but and then I was just kind of militant about just trying shit. Like if you, I, I haven't deleted any of it. If you go to my early TikTok shit, it looks like, weird and awkward and strange and not funny um and then i had one that was like history related that was like that one did pretty well it got like five hundred thousand views and it was like under 15 seconds and i was like and then the fucking your phone explodes when you go viral like on tiktok it just absolutely and i was completely addicted i was like holy fucking shit imagine we're addicted when we get Ten thousand views yeah. on a clip. Yeah, right, I can't imagine. So that was probably within the first like thirty or so posts that I made. Like one of them hit like five hundred thousand, and I was like, and it was about history. And I was like, okay, let me try some more history. That wasn't working. And then I made one that was like uh, making fun of. I saw like a comparison video that was like uh, applying for a job in the seventies versus two thousands, and it was like 
a guy who's literally like, hey, I'm here for the job. And it's like, you're hired. And that was the 70s. And then the 2000s, it's like, I have an MBA. And the guy like rips up the resume and just like gives like a yeah. fuck you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, let me try that. And then I did that with like 2000s versus 1900s. And that got like a million. And I was like, okay, so comparison. Uh, and then I was like, what if I, I have that tweet that went viral? And I was doing other tweets that like had, did, had done okay. And I was like, what if I did the American Europe comparison thing and then that one i made it it was like under 12 seconds long and it got like five million views oh, wow. Wow. on tiktok and then i posted it to instagram and it got five million wow. there. So you have more followers on tiktok or instagram instagram i'm instagram. probably one of the few right? so that's interesting so you got five million and five million that's like uh yeah yeah because i've never anything that's done well on instagram has never done well on tiktok or yeah. vice versa or youtube that this and never... how does that translate to ticket sales sorry to cut you off yeah i just uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by the yeah. it's um, i've heard different things now where people yeah. are like an email list is it's like a thousand followers is equal to one email you got from a gig kind of thing. Yeah, That's how they're I, looking at it. I'd say it's probably close to that. Uh, the demand. Yeah. So like I could with 150,000 Instagram followers, I could probably sell um, 30, 20, 20 to 60 tickets in any city in America, if I had to guess. Okay. So um, any city in America, at minimum, yeah. 20 to 60 tickets. Yeah, and the major ones like Chicago, yeah, yeah, LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's probably, and then like I'll probably underperform, I'll probably overperform. And then in Europe, it is, I sold out every show in Europe. So wow. Europe is... Which, which was like, that wow, was... Wow, okay. And so my, friend, my brother was like, are you doing better in Europe? And I was like, I might be. Like, yeah. I don't know what to oh, really wild. necessarily do with that. So, but that's only in this past year. And that was like four years of making the clips. Right. And then finally I was like, okay. And then it was just like even getting to 45 minutes that I wanted to do on stage. Yeah. And then like, okay, these people know me from sketch. How do I even translate so, it? Yeah. So I had to figure that out. And so now it's like at a point where like I can ask people like, come see me and I won't leave the show being like, oh my God, I disappointed people. Like I feel sure. like they can, they're like receiving the value that they're putting into it. That's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That really is fascinating. So it's like, I'm, I'm totally, uh, that's exciting. So the sketch, uh, I haven't seen the stuff. So it, it's interviews on the street. Is that no? It's it's me playing a European, and then me playing an American. Ah. Usually, like under thirty seconds. Sometimes they'll like go more. The European that's has the key. I think, yeah, is under thirty seconds. Right? I that's, that's absolutely under thirty. Like yeah. under thirty. Caption it under thirty, and then also, I've just been repeating a different version of the same joke. Which is like that Americans are psychopaths and Europeans are obsessed with quality of life. That's all of them can get uh, lodged into that like yeah. uh, view. But there was like, <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to Monet, the guy who made the lily pads. But the he, I remember seeing it at like the MoMA. Monet, the comic? Yeah. The Monet, female comic? <laughs> Monet, the, Monet, the female comic. Uh, French painter. and <laughs> Not that <laughs> There I is, mean, I don't know. I haven't heard the point yet. Maybe, maybe Monet also. It could also <laughs> apply to her, maybe. But it, uh, it was um, this like arch in France, and this guy—he was a very famous painter, and he painted one for every time of the day. So he made sixteen different arches, but they all look really fucking cool, mm -hmm. and it's all just the same arch. Uh, and so I'm doing uh, like, uh, what's his? Uh, how many fucking self portraits did Van Gogh do? Oh, tons, yeah. And people are like, "Aren't you worried about being repetitive?" I'm like, "It's all different, right. but it's all in yeah, the same." Yeah. And also, it's like tricking the algorithm too. Of course, where yeah, like yeah. I've found a thing that is like working for the algorithm, and it's something that I'm like genuinely fascinated in because yeah. Europeans are fucking. They will literally like fuck off for a month. Oh yeah, and honestly, not to call back to Jim Gaffigan too many times, but I mean. He's got five albums about food. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, like it's yeah, not, yeah. It's not. A, you found it, what you do not, well. Yeah, and right. People love, and yeah. you find new ways to do it. That's cool, dude. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. That's exciting, so it's man. been fun. And follow me. Do it's, it. Yeah, plug. So plug your ass. Go ahead. The plug. Uh, just follow me on Instagram. That's pretty much where I do. What is the handle? Uh, Dampelzello. Thank God. Just a unique last name. Yeah. A fucking Italian WAP last name that nobody knows how to pronounce <laughs> or spell. But in Instagram, I'm the only Dan that's nice. so yeah. that's yeah, so it works something out. that's nice. Excellent. Yeah. You can I'll follow be... me at Josh Accardo, another uh, Guinea name, not quite as uh, unique as Dan's. I don't have the success. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> JoshCardo.com for all tour dates. Edward? Uh, Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram, EdMcGowan.com. Follow us, uh, follow us, Working Class Holes, on Instagram. Also, email us. We got an email list. Uh, Working us, Class Holes Comedians. Listen, if you have stories about Jim Gaffigan, we want them. Yeah, we, we want, want it. Have you ever worked the door at a comedy club? Send us a note. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Working Class Comedians at gmail.com. We will see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 